so oft, uh, well, maybe not oft enough, but you have said it many times on this show that the point of doing something like this is to kind of open up to the audience and expose ourselves. That's how you have to do it, man. It's about right. you. We're, now, it's us talking. We have upcoming things like the first annual anniversary show, but mm. since we're on episode mm. 50, 50, five zero. Five zero. The big five O. Oh. Five O, oh, yeah. Uh, H2, oh, yeah. Um, and especially because we just talked about epic ways to die. Yeah. I thought. Or stupid ways to die. <laughs> and stupid ways to die. <laughs> and because my favorite time of year is approaching, which you know, my favorite holiday of all time. This is Halloween. This, this is Halloween. Halloween. This Halloween. 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 What's this? What's this? One of my favorite uh, musicals of all time. Oh, Chris Sarandon's voice, uh, which we have said that before. Yeah. I have definitely uttered that phrase on the show before. I think Chris, you have to, yeah. Chris Sarandon's voice. How I think can we talked about Halloween movies before. I think we, we, we talked about scary movies. We I talked think, about scary movies. Yeah, yes. and I, think, I don't know if Night Before. No, now, I think no, it's Christmas movies. So we, we did. We talked about Halloween, scary movies, and Christmas. I'm going to say this real quick before we jump and dive into it. But seeing as how you completed the half marathon, completed you. That too, I guess. Completed. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at beer. <laughs> uh, seeing as how you completed the half marathon, I do think that in the future, we're going to have to get Jeff in full-blown Captain America cosplay on this show. Ooh. Okay. So here's, here's the... Um, Throw it out there. Yeah, especially I, because of his, 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 his fantastic run that he had where he got oh, called, Captain, this, where yeah, he got called Captain America. Yeah. That's why I wore my and Captain was, America shirt on my half marathon because I got called Captain America six times. And he was, he was getting wolf whistles from the ladies. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the men. Yeah, but yeah. it was all because you know, he looks like Captain America. Yeah. Um, I, um, this is here's the thing. Update for the bet because I completed my half of the bet. I completed half marathon. The Comic Con in uh, Rosemont was in August. We're in September now. Uh, Missed it again. We talked about it early. Kind of a weird month for Danny and I. A lot of weird shit going on. Um, it's busyness. A and, lot of work and, launching a restaurant. Yeah, and a lot of paths. It's it's weird. And and so we decided that we're gonna push it to April, which the comic convention is here in Chicago, which we live in the city of Chicago, so it's closer by, and it's easier to commute to. And honestly, to tell you the truth, Danny and I have only been to that convention one it's time. It's opening year. C2 yeah, we went to the opening year, and that's it. And we haven't been back. So I was like, I've been to Wizard World um, in Rosemont many times. And honestly, the lineup was really weak this year, I felt. I was like, mm. um, But I want to go to C2E2 again because I haven't been in a long time, and let alone it gives us more time to plan. So around that time, maybe we'll have Jeff on as Cap America. Yes. Um, also, I'm just throwing it out there now. If we have all the way till April, uh, we should... Rally around him. We should probably also go in full-blown costume. Oh, I'm going as Bucky. Nice. I'm nice. going as Bucky. I got your back, Jeff. All right, and I'm, well, tell, I'm trying to get Vince Connie to go as Peggy Carter. I'm trying Christ, to get, I'm trying I might to, have to be Falcon, then. I'm trying to poke... Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to poke uh, Connie to go as uh, Peggy Carter. But she, I think she would like that. She, she, she's a, she won... Um, when we were working together, uh, Connie dressed as um, Flo from the Gaio commercial, and she won first place. She looked great. She's nice. good costume. She's good. She's good at it. Um, where the hell were we talking about? Well, uh, we, we digressed with, big time. We, on we started with Halloween. We moved into Halloween. We started talking about costumes is where it led me to Jeff's part of the bet as yeah. cosplay because I want him to follow through on that. Uh, anyways, uh, getting close to my favorite time of year. However, I'm sure we'll touch on it once it comes around. Uh, but I thought it might be fun to talk about ourselves. Uh, and Blake... What really, truly scares the hell out of you? Okay. Criteria. It can be stuff from your childhood that you're not even afraid of anymore. It can be current stuff. Uh, it can be little stuff. It doesn't even have to be... It's all serious. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be... Nah, this is going to be fun. It's all serious and shit. This is also dynamite for anybody who hates us that listens to oh this show. Oh, my God. This is... Well, God, it's really no surprise. Uh, well, well, okay. You want me to start off with one? I'll let you decide. Uh, I can start off with one that a lot of people know about me. I do not like clowns. Clowns freak me out. I've always known that. Yeah. Yeah. You've said that for a you've, but The reason I know that's true is because you've said that for a long time. Yeah. And I've I known just, this guy for a long time. I just, I just, I don't, 
I don't like them. They freak me out. Uh, it probably started with the movie It as a child. That that was a lot of people though. Uh, also, I can I have remember. I remember Killer Clowns from Outer Space as a child. That movie freaked me. That yeah. look, it didn't do it for me because the reason why it didn't do it for me because if you watch that movie now, you realize how little that clown is in that movie. Like that clown is yeah. not in that movie that much. It really is. Tim isn't. Curry. Yeah, Tim Curry was great, but he's not like the clown. Is he deceased. No. Okay. He's uh, he he had a scare, but he's good. Okay. Um, he was not in that movie that much. The killer clowns from outer space freaked me out because like it was way more rated R. Like it was it a was TV way movie. more gory. Yeah. It it was a TV movie. Okay. Yeah. Killer clowns from outer space. The scene that really fucked with me was when they saw like the human meat sacks and the the clowns would put the straws in it and suck. Right. Out of the sex. I'm like, are you fucking kidding now, me? Let's 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 talk about that for a second because as kids, it was a thing in the early nineties to have those weird, wacky, like bendy straws with the crazy swirl designs and everything like that. And it was just like, Oh yeah, these are fun, they're cool. This is how we drink juice. <laughs> uh, and and that's what Capri the- Sun <laughs> That's what the clowns <laughs> used, though. They yeah. had these weird, wacky, whirly straws, and I was just like, Oh my god, I can never drink out of those straws again. Uh-huh. They're used for drinking human blood. And the shadow puppet, remember you did the shadow puppet, and the shadow puppet ate all the people? Yeah. No. Horrifying. Fucking horrifying when you're a and kid. No. Okay, so it's it's almost to a point where it's kind of an irrational fear. I'm a grown man now. It, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be a thing that bothers <laughs> nah, that's me. Not, I, uh, see, that's it's a sh- good point of this topic. But uh, I, I what a, <laughs> one of the, the, it was like a year or two ago, one of the girls that I was dating at the time, one, knew this about me, and two, purposely used it to... <laughs> To fuck with me, See, which is not cool. Yeah, it's not cool. Uh, it's not cool. But she started sending me articles about what was going on, which is a real thing. Yeah, I think it was like in Arizona or something. There were reports and people were calling the cops because there was just people who were just walking around through like parks at night in like creepy clown outfits and just like lingering by like grocery stores. Oh, I and saw stuff that. Like, yeah. And I, I was saw just that. Like, they were not like because they knew the law. Yeah. That they all they they were not doing anything. Yeah, they were just standing there. Yeah, but not like touching anyone. They weren't right. interfering with their like they were just standing there, which is still to me horrifying. I yeah, hate that. I hate that. I was just like, never going, never going. Sorry, um, that shit starts happening in Chicago. I I'll get arrested for assault real oh, fast. Sure. Oh yeah, I see Danny throwing down on some clowns. Mm-hmm. Throwing down on the clown. How, but how about stupid crazy death by a clown, uh, Danny? Wouldn't that suck? Yes. Die by your fear. Uh, yeah. No. So, Field Museum, uh, I actually was there not too long ago, and they have like a big mirror maze in there, which oh, is yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that I, I will say this. In the back of my mind, I was just a little bit creeped out in mirror mazes because that always happens in clown movies. The carnival mirror <laughs> maze scene. <laughs> right. One comes around the corner, but then you're surrounded by like 100 because it's a mirror maze, and you're like, oh my God, I don't know where they're coming from. Well, they from. bring you some sh- some sheer joy because of the game I know you played. Uh, Zombies at my neighbors. When you get to the clowns, did it give you pleasure like when you had to des- destroy the clowns in that game? Yeah. Die, clown. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure yes. it did. Um, I think it's an ongoing joke with me. That, and I'll be honest. This is be honest. Sure. Like I know it's an ongoing joke. Ideally, that, you wouldn't I mean, be like, lying to this, us. Yes, yes. And here's the honest truth about it. Like, there's always a joke that I'm a, like terrified of pigs. I don't like pigs. I, I I don't like them. I think they they're a very smart animal that can eat you. <laughs> um, the truth is, though, if like the truth is, if there was a pig. In front of me, I would not be like crying. I wouldn't be screaming, or or I wouldn't. And I think you know that should be yeah. true. I mean, I wouldn't be like you like can terrified. Take, you can take Blake to a petting zoo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like I wouldn't be shivering and, and and like freaking out or anything at all. Like I don't freak out about really anything. Um, but I, but to be honest, like pigs do make me uneasy. It's the squeal. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of bad references in movies with pigs. Biblically, pigs are unclean. You know, it's just this thing that was always like put in, like when the when Willow, when the witch turned the people into pigs, and um, and and and, uh, and Hannibal, uh, the the pigs ate the people. Remember, they like the, the pigs got hungry when they had the sound. Yeah. With the guys, the people screaming, and then when they heard people screaming, the pigs knew it was feeding time, and they would eat people. Yep. Um, I can get a lot more references of pigs like 
being these unclean evil creatures. And I think that just like over time just built up and I'm just like, oh, however, I love bacon and pork. Right. So I was just about to ask, do you get extra satisfaction out of eating bacon and pork? That's where the best type of pig is, dead pig. Because (laughs) unlike a cow, cow produces milk. Chicken, lay eggs. What the fuck does a pig give us? What does a pig give us except its body? Chicken gives us body, but it gives us eggs. Milk, cow, steak, milk. Pig, what, what the fuck are you giving us, pig? Huh? No, just body. Sure, Lisa. One magical animal. <laughs> uh, remind me at some point in time to tell you the story that my grandma used to tell me. Uh, I'll remind it right now. See how much she knows. Yeah. Grandma it story. does involve a pig, and it involves my great grandfather. Pig story. Um, okay. So, uh, just a tiny reference. My mom's side of the family, my grandma in particular, her family has kind of a haunted history behind it. And cool. there's, there's a story about pigs that is particularly kind of weird and horrifying. All right. Well, yeah. I have to star that one for around uh, Halloween. How about that, Danny? Mm-hmm. Save that one for Halloween. Definitely. Um, I think you want to get now serious now. We get the serious shit out of the way. Hopefully you have another one. If not, I, I, well, I, yeah, sure. I, I really like to tell you, I don't have many fears. I yep. really don't. For me, it's, it's all like, you know, if that's what fear is, it's all, it's all right. self inflicting. I gotta, I gotta remember what it was from. Uh, mm-hmm. It was in something that I watched recently, but I absolutely love the quote. And it was somebody was talking about fear, and one of the characters goes, Fear is wisdom in the face of danger. Uh, mm. And honestly, I think it might have been Sherlock, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to fix the facts on that. Uh, but I absolutely love that fact and or that quote, and I was just like, "Yes, it's like it is." However, sometimes <laughs> there's really I'm not in danger, but I still like irrationally in my mind I'm just like something's not right. Right. Yeah. Oh. I believe it was also in the movie in Jumanji. Fix the facts on this, Danny. Sure. It was Jumanji, but I'm gonna mess up this quote. But uh, Robin Williams had the gun pointed at him. He's like, "You afraid?" He's like, "I'm terrified." But I was told by a great man. You should always stand up to your fears. I'm like, yeah. Simple as that. Agreed. We miss you, Robin. Um, I, um, I think my biggest fear is going, looking back at my life, I don't know, 50, 60 years old, I don't know, and having a sense of regret. Uh, a sense of, um, I wish I would have done this, or I wish, I at least would have known, like I pursued this. Like, and not, I wish that, I lo- I look back and then, and now I hope I never say like, this was your dream and you never chased it, and you filled it with like denial or excuses or bullshit that you talked yourself out of it. I think that's my biggest fear is that I get to this age where I feel like I should have done something at the time. Like, and then I'm like at this time, like my older self will be like, I, I, what you're, you're, you, you, you only have one life. All I got is one life. Yeah. Nas. Yes. And realizing that, you know, it's my life is two thirds over. Right. And I'm too old to be doing some things I could have done when I was younger. Um, so I think that's my fear is just, and I've been, I think I've been really good at this sort of, because I think the two biggest things we always have things, the two, this is, this is my philosophy that I have, I have three things. I'm not going to reveal them all here, but I have three things that I live by or I feel that's true to us as people. And one of the things I think is, you know, everything comes down to time and money and fear is always, in fact, it's associated with time and money that the reason we won't, Hey, you want to go to this all exclusive trip to Mexico? Like next year, just you have to put down, you know, $1,500 to do it. I don't have the money for that right now. Like you just missed out on this fucking trip. Fast interjection. Uh, I was dead, dead serious about going to Tokyo for the 2020 Olympics. I'll write that down. Yeah. Uh, Jeff responded to my post on Facebook. Uh, Caleb already wants to go. I'm already automatically assuming that you're going to come with us. Yeah. Uh, the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Sure. 
Yeah. Is this going to be like a guy thing or we're just going to No, no, no. It doesn't count? have to be a guy thing at all. It's, all right. just, it's just a trip that right away when we saw that uh, Japan was going to be hosting the Olympics in 2020 at the end of this year's ceremony, I looked at Caleb and I was like, I want to go to that. And he's like, yeah. He's like, I want to go too. All right. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. We're going to Olympics in 2020, guys. That's four years from now. We're going to go. Yep. Stay with us. Show will still be going on because I ain't quitting. Jenny, you quitting? Nope. Can't stop. I don't know the meaning of the word quit. That's right, buddy. That's right. This two episodes ago, I said, the committer that's not a quitter, Danny Brahas. What's your last fear, buddy? Because we're running out of time here. We're running out of time here. Um, I said two each. That's fair. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh in the, in the long run, I think you and I kind of share a very similar thing. Uh, in the long run, I do, in the back of my head, always kind of, I have this inherent fear of being trapped uh, to one lifestyle, and I don't ever want that to happen. I do what I do, and I like what I do. I do what I do to pay bills, but to me, there's always has... That's, there always, that's very similar to what I just said. Right. There always has to be something more. Um, for me, I, I very much have the mentality that there is always another mountain to climb. Uh, part of the reason that I like that we do this is because it's, it's something that we do that's really different, uh, it's, especially for me, from what I do out in my normal life. And I think that you and I, you, and I, you and I share kind of that in common because I, I, I'm a very big believer in that you were not just born to work and pay bills and die. Uh, there has to be more. Or, I mean, well, yeah. some people... This is, uh, so, so, uh, excuse if you, me, just uh, sure. it's for some people, that's fine. And some people uh, finding the family and raising the kids and they dedicate their lives to their family. There's a lot of people that are 100% content with that and they want that. And I respect that. Sure. But there's a lot of people who don't want that. Right. Or may have not found that yet. Or another, trying to find the balance between that and their life. Another one that I really like is uh, you were not meant to live the same year 75 times and call it a life. Right. Uh, oh, I like that. And Who said that? I, I don't know. It's, it's a quote that I read. A lot of fixing yeah. facts this episode. Shit, it's a, it's a quote sorry, that man. I read, but it's, uh, it's one that I really like. And, and honestly, man, like that's, I have that fear. Like Because I do what I do and because the restaurant industry will rope you in, uh, that's my constant fear is like I don't. I don't want to live the same year 75 times and call it a life. But don't. Know, Danny and I, we got a lot of plans. We got plans. We got things for the shows. We got things for our personal lives. We got things that um, we're, we're at, the, at the early steps, and, you know. And I've always said this, that if something doesn't work out, that's fine. But as long as you tried, you know that you tried hard. And there's no shame in that. That there's no shame of that, like, I want to win an Oscar someday. And you find out, you take all these acting classes and like that, and then you go to those auditions and like, wow, there's a lot of people better than me. There's a lot of people better than me. And they look better than me, too, for what they're looking for. I'm not saying like a social acceptance sure. disorder. I'm talking about like for roles for looking good for the part or something like that. Right. You get this realization like, huh. I did all this, this, this work and I have some of acting and like, I'm just not getting work, but you can take that and transcend it into another path that could be even more profitable and more emotional, like, uh, satisfa like uh, satisfying, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So let's, 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 random example. So let's say, let's just say like an uh, actor wants to be the big Hollywood star, win the Oscar or something like that, but like, can't get the job, can't get the job. But then the side is all this like auditioning and all this spokesmanship could lead this actor to the face of some TV show that's just like the TV show host or like uh, whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. the face of this company or the face of like so, so gets paid great. Now he's not winning Oscars, but he had all that experience and he's now transcending it to a TV career where he's either doing commercials or he's the host of some show and, and what I know it might be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Danny. Like, what are you rating this? Because uh, I'm very curious. And you're going to go first today because you brought it. And uh, yeah. I want you to go first this time. Um, so just a couple of notes on it as I've been drinking it and tasting it. Uh, they, I, and I like English style IPAs a lot. I hit a, point, I hit a point during the end of summer where I just get totally uh, IPA'd out. Uh, because I'm just kind of 
Test for me for winter, believe it or not. Yeah, tired. I'm, I, I get towards the end of summer, I'm just kind of tired of, you know, uh, that traditional super hot forward American style IPA. Yeah. And what I like really a lot about the English style ones is that their, their malt backbones are huge and they're, you know, they're very notable and they're aggressive. Um, I really like this. Uh, I really like this too. I'm, I'm going to go four. Uh, it's a good beer. It, it is. It's, it's very much what I expected. It's, it's got a lot of that very earthy kind of grassy kind of flavor to it. But at the same time, there's like smoked wood and on the finish for me, it's, it's almost a little bit sweet. Uh, I, I mean, I taste, I'm tasting like almost a little bit of salted, like caramel at the back of it. And yeah, man, I, it's a little bit strong at 7.1%. Uh, I couldn't drink a ton of these, but I could definitely drink a couple of these and love it. Um, it's hard to, you know, I like tend to like going first for you because you usually do a really good out of description. Um, I'm a hundred percent with you. This is a four. This yeah. is a solid four beer and that's a high one for me because, you know, I'm a little bit tougher grader yeah. on the show, but, um, I'm actually very pleased with that as a four because this is like my third four in a row. I think it might be. I gave our last one to Beguile. I was the only one who gave it a four. Yeah, I saw re- that. I really yeah. liked it. I really liked it. Um, and that's not like me for that type of beer, but I really liked it. This is a gr- this. I, when I first smelled this beer, I was like, I'm gonna like this. Right. I almost want to drink this again when I'm past this kind of sinus. Yeah, sinus same here. And like cold. Yeah. And so what does that, that tell you though? Is yeah. that say something more than that? Both the day, I'm suffering from freaking ass stupid ass hay fever where we don't even need these weeds <laughs> to exist because i fuck the echo the ecosystem like fuck that like do we need what if we just got exterminated ragweed what's that gonna fuck up like seriously yeah. what is that gonna fuck up it's gonna fuck up some maybe maybe a butterfly maybe i don't what this, this beer is good to the point that i will talk to my beverage director and be like hey if we haven't considered this we should try and get this on tap if they're putting it on tap i'm very pleased with this beer and it's all chicago yeah. beers for your local 30 uh maybe push that down the road yeah um i know you got a business blah 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 but anywho i'm very pleased with this um graph yeah. designs lovely uh so the four for me is a lot Technically, I've only given technically I've only given one five ever in fifty episodes. I've only given one five on this show. So, what does that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? This has been episode fifty of a brew with you. I have been one of your hosts, Blake Mickle. You can find me Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, but most importantly, patreoncom slash Blake, where you get this episode a week early, along with other exclusive content, rewards, perks. All the direct information that I provide to my patrons. Sure. See what happens when Blake and I do a show where we don't drink beer and drink gin. That was last one, right? Yep. The uh, Patreon. Yes. The, the, the exclusive, yes. That was a fun, oh God, that was a fun episode. It's liked a lot on Twitter. A lot of likes on Twitter. Most of it's porn, but lots of likes. <laughs> Danny. Yes. If you want people to follow you, where would they go? Uh, you can find me at Danny Adam B on Instagram to get two biblical a, names, right? <laughs> Very biblical, and to get a biblically embarrassing portrait, photo portrait of my life, because uh, I post a lot of ridiculous things on there. Uh, as well as just a lot of very cute things on there, uh, cute. especially photos of nephew and niece and etc. Uh, and Danny Abrahas on Twitter. Often you'll find me conversing with at Big Deal Blake on Twitter. It's great, and we have good conversations. And uh, if you go to my Instagram, I have this great slow motion video of a dog. Eating an ice cube. That is internet video right there, man. That's like internet quality. Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. But most importantly, thank you for telling your friend. And we'll see you for episode 51. We're almost at the one year. We're almost there. We're looking forward to it and looking forward to hosting you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>